Hey, this is Christian Buckley with another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm here today with a fellow, another MVP as well as Microsoft Regional Director, Ahmed. Hey, good to, good to see you. Hi, Christian. Thanks very much for having me. It's great to have you. So for folks that don't know who you are, where you are, what you do, why don't you give us your background? So my name is Ahmed Nabil. Um, I am uh, Microsoft MVP for the last eight years. Uh, I've been working mainly in the enterprise security and then uh, Microsoft now changed everything to the cloud. So I've been named as the cloud at the center. And uh, just recently, a couple of months, I've been also awarded the regional director. I'm from Egypt, uh, living now in Dubai, UE, uh, working in an international financial institution as, uh, of course, as information security manager. Um, I have two girls, one boy, a cat and a dog. Excellent. Well, I, I, you're indoors. I know it's, it's a warm time of year over there. I've been several times through Dubai. Of course, it's a, it's a great place to stop over. It's one of the most beautiful uh, um, uh, airports in the world. It's fantastic. Yeah, true, uh, true. But, but man, it gets hot <laughs> over there. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, you need to avoid the summer here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, uh, so I, I'm interested to know, like in your kind of area of focus, we were just talking before we start, hit record about how, uh, like the evolution of your MVP, like, so what technologies kind of dig into that? Like, like, where did you start? What did you start working with? How did you become an MVP? So uh, it's a funny story. I didn't know what's an MVP. And um, I've been working actively in the community. I believe in giving back to the community and sharing um, what I'm doing. Actually, when I started my blog, I was using this blog as a kind of uh, like my own um, history to write whatever, uh, any problem that I've solved or any, anything that passed by just to, I, I, you know, of course, we all suffer from some brain. <laughs> so I, I was using this mainly as my own um, register to remember things, remember the problems. And then I started publishing a lot of things. And then someone from Microsoft approached me and told me about the MVP. And at the beginning, so the MVP, maybe it's another certificate or something. And then I realized it's not about this, it's about, again, the community and the activities. And that's how I came into um, the MVP. And this is the good thing because, I mean, uh, Microsoft people, um, are looking for um, the talents, are looking for the people who are really giving to the community. I was, I used to to to, to write a lot of blogs and answer a lot of questions on TechEd back at the days. Mm -hmm. So I started mainly with anything related to enterprise security, uh, crossing everything, Active Directory, all system center applications, even the virtualizations. Uh, at that days, eight, nine years ago, maybe 10 years ago, it was mainly on premise. And then everything switched to the cloud. And my main focus now is the cloud security or the cloud architecture and uh, how the cloud technology can help us and impact our lives and how to secure it. Because this is a big buzz there uh, with the cloud and security. Yep. I, I love that as part of your origin story, that like the, the idea of, of capturing in the blog. It's funny, I just had a conversation this morning. I do have a weekly uh, AMA style panel where we go through and we use office hours, we answer questions, we pull off a of Facebook mm -hmm. and tech community. And we were talking about, you know, getting more viewers on there. And we had, uh, I think at the one point we had 14 people on the live stream. And, oh. uh, and so, it, and, and there are over, over the, the, once the recording is published, it actually gets uh, hundreds of visits to, uh, to the live streams and the videos out on YouTube. Wow. But how we get more people on it. And I said, you know, it's not really been, you know, entirely the, the, the goal. People go and they find the snippets here and there. But I use my blog the sure. same way. And this, the office hours, kind of the same way. We try to reach back out to the people sure. who ask the questions. Maybe we just help one yeah. person, you know. Yeah. But it helps us learn. We're talking through these different sure. like We're every week we're learning about stuff. And so... I use my blog the exact same way. It's whether there's yeah. five people reading it or 5,000 people reading it, uh, you know, that article. I think. Yeah. Month. No, I mean, this is, I mean, this is the actual reward. This is the best rewarding thing. When someone just sent you a comment 
that your blog or maybe your answers or question or something really helped them and saved them a lot of hours. That's, that's actually the real reward uh, from the MV program, that you feel that you've done something uh, someone else uh, who really needed help. Right. Well, that's the, uh, that's the, the secret. I mean, people, I'm sure you, get, you hear from people all the time, like, what can I do to become an MVP? I don't know. What's your, what's your response yeah. to that question? Because we all get that all the time. Yeah, that's true. Actually, um, so I'm getting this question every time. Uh, and since I'm living here in the Middle East, um, so I mean, recently, um, me and a couple of also uh, friends, other MVPs and RDs, we created even a video um, in Arabic, um, targeting our uh, Middle East people and community to um, let them understand what's MVP and uh, what you need to become an MVP. And the people think that it's kind of a maybe a simple thing or simple something you pass and maybe uh, do a session or write a blog, but actually it's more a commitment. It's more a commitment to the community. So you're taking this time from your family, from your own leisure time and giving it to the community because you should be you passionate about this technology or about this product. And the second thing it's you need really to be, especially with MVPs and this difference between MVPs and the RDs, with the MVPs you need to be a little bit uh, deep dive to the technology. Uh, very focused in a specific area of technology, which is uh, different than the RT. So, I mean, we try to explain this because, I mean, uh, everyone will just approach you saying, okay, can you nominate me? Can you nominate me? And then at, at least, at least my, my, my answer is at least I need to see your work at least one year. Uh, what have you been doing to the community and what's the feedback and what's the effect you're having in your, at least your uh, closest community? Yeah, that's the hardest part too, is that when uh, maybe the, these people that come and ask this are doing amazing things, but they're, it's not really surfaced up to what's visible. And there's, there's always that fine line between self-promotion and just trying to raise awareness of something. I don't know how, do you differentiate between those? Like, how do you surface, how do you personally surface the things that you're doing around the community? So this is another thing that we have been working uh, on it as well, which is mentoring some people. So sometimes, I mean, even without people approaching me, sometimes in one of the community or one of the um, events, one of the local events, meetups, conferences, uh, you can really, really see someone uh, has a very, very good potential to be an MPP and enroll in the MPP program. However, he's not able to promote himself. Um, that's that's really where we can just tap in and start helping uh, these people. I, I was really happy to mentor maybe one or two uh, in the recent year. Uh, one of them became an MVP as well um, to guide them how they can promote themselves, how they can what what channels are available, um, what areas they need to tackle it, and so it's very it's very actually um, exciting and very rewarding for me as well. Yeah. The the uh, so what. what Let's say that I've approached you. I've said, hey, you know, I've, I've been doing a lot of things. I'm involved with my user group. I've got a blog that, that's been out there. Uh, I've participated in a couple of these MA, you know, AMAs that ask me anything kind of discussions to help others out there, none of which is part of my day job. Like my company is not, you know, uh, paying me to go out and, and do, do this activity. It's all yep. above and beyond that. Like, what yep. are your recommendations? that you would give me? So my, my main recommendation, first of all, is that he need to focus on a specific area and he need to pick an area where he had some struggles with it. So normally what will drive you to go with this blogging things that most probably you searched, you Googled everything and you didn't find an answer. It's very difficult to find things. That, and that's why you start doing your own content. So I mean, um, so it's not about copying some content or making some replicas. I mean, this will not add anything, even it will not add to your uh, blog or site on, on Google or the searches. So my main focus is just tackle this thing. Think about the new ideas. Maybe it's things like AI or whatever is coming new. I mean, tackle these things. There's um, less content available. And then think about uh, your community. What's the community looking for? So again, it's different between, for example, Middle East, Europe, or America. The challenges um, that we face here might, might differ a little bit than what's, for example, in America. Uh, so I mean, we need to be focused on our own community, our own problems, uh, our own challenges. Uh, that's how I say it. And then uh, start working with it step by step. There are different channels, um, things like meetups, things like the um, uh, local events, 
um, I can help someone to uh, nominate him maybe for a speaking uh, slot in one of the meetups, one of the local events, and then it builds on this step by step. Yeah. Well, so what are I, I'd be interested to know that since you you know, with, within Egypt and UAE, like what is the community like in that part of the world? Like I've I've had some interactions with uh, some user groups, and I've presented at SharePoint Saturday events in a few different countries. Um, yeah. And and uh, so I, I've been over. In fact, mo most of the times that I've been over to um, UAE, it's been to present to user groups and and at the Microsoft facility. Cool. Wow. Um, it's been a few years now since I've traveled over there, but um, four or five years. Uh, but but how is the community doing over there, and 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 what's different from other parts of the world that you've interacted with? So I think the community is really here eager to learn. Uh, we have our own challenges. So when I, when I travel, for example, to Ignite or some other conference in Europe or, um, or the States, um, you find, for example, that the cloud adoption is, is much, uh, much more mature than um, where, where I'm coming from. And maybe this is because there's a lot of regulations that are stopping people. Maybe in some countries there's some problems with the infrastructure itself. So people, people are, ha are really eager um, to leverage the new technologies, to use the new technologies. Things like the cloud, um, and then we've seen what happened during um, this pandemic, and how the people who were really cloud-driven or adopted the cloud uh, were able to survive um, um, the difficult situation with the remote working. Um, so these are kind of a problems. So people always come and ask, for example, about the security, about the data, about uh, how can they move to the cloud. Um, how can they uh, transform their own um, digital transformation, how they can transform their own on-premises and old servers and old data and move to the cloud in a secure secure way. This is the main challenge here that I've been seeing in the, uh, in the last uh, maybe a uh, couple of years. Uh, but honestly, when we do, for example, I participate as well in one of the SharePoint Saturdays in Egypt, several one of them with my SharePoint MVPs, uh, friends. And... Um, these kind of meetups uh, or local events, we never expect maybe uh, people to attend or maybe a few bunch handful of people will attend, but really when just specific topics, we're gonna to find a lot of people coming, a lot of people asking a lot of questions, um, which is really, really interesting. You know, that that has been, uh, you know, obviously my, my original MVP was in, uh, was in SharePoint. Now I'm, uh, you know, office apps and services. So I talk a lot about, your know, teams, I'm, I'm, uh, we yeah. answer questions about exchange, kind of all the, the, the office suite, kind of everything around there. But a lot of my experience around community is around in and around the SharePoint Saturday kind of movement. And a lot of people that are outside of the SharePoint space may not be aware of this phenomenon that just went global and it's still going where it was pre-COVID, still going strong. Um, yeah, true. And, and a lot of those events. But one of the things that I really like about what the community is, it's kind of what you, what you just said, is that you might have speakers. Um, like, for, if, here's a great example. Um, I was approached with providing a keynote virtually for a SharePoint Saturday in Ahmedabad, India, uh, which is over on the okay. uh, western side of the country. Yeah. I've been over to, I've been there in person. I used to have a development team that was based out of Ahmedabad. And, uh, and so mm -hmm. I thought, this is fantastic. Uh, so the keynote's going, uh, you're presenting, and I realize I look in the audience, there's two of my friends from the East Coast of the U.S. sitting in the mm -hmm. audience, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so you have, and you, and that's actually a fairly common thing where the call for speakers go out and you might be traveling over to the U.S. And I imagine like mm -hmm. you, you look around and say, hey, what other, what events are going on? Anything that I could participate since I'm going to be in the city at sure. the time. I think that way as yeah. well when I'm traveling remotely uh, or, or around the world as I look and see, is there anything going on in a user yeah. groups meeting and events uh, that I can attend True. as an attendee or potentially speak? And so you have- Yeah, whenever we go to Ignite, yeah, whenever we go to Ignite or the MVP Summit, we usually see if there may be some SharePoint Saturday or some kind of SQL thing or something happening that we can even help, uh, if not even speaking. But I mean, it's all about the community, I mean, and, um, and how you can give to this uh, community and help people. So, yeah, that's true. That's a great way, though, for community, for, for folks that aren't active in, in those SharePoint Saturdays, but you know, even your user groups, a lot of these events that are going on is, but getting involved is is it, it's a great opportunity to start coming kind of uh, 
uh, rubbing elbows, the, the phrase goes, uh, with yep. experts around the world. Um, most of us That's that true. are in the community, MVPs and RDs, I wouldn't say most. Every MVP or RD I've ever met, they are some of the most social people, meaning they're willing true. to connect, to uh, give you their contact information, to get in touch, to an help answer questions. And if they don't know the answer, to point you to somebody who probably does know the answer to the question. But you have to take that's that true. first step and reach out. Yeah, that's true, that's true. So the good thing about, uh, especially now maybe when I became an RD, I think that was one of the main reasons I became RD, is now is that I became more diversified um, the, this kind of cross-function things. So I'm more into the architecture of things now, the focus of the cloud and security architecture. Um, because now I, I, I've been exposed to a lot of technologies on different verticals. And my main aim now is to help the people to leverage this so they can boost their business uh, by leveraging the right technologies. Um, uh, I've passed by a lot of companies, a lot of people where they might have the technology and they're not able to get all out of this technology. Um, uh, you know, you're just turning all the buttons with this technology and get all out of, all, a lot of it. So maybe that's that's maybe that's the, my next challenge would be um, the helping people with for this journey for the digital situation journey. Well, and, and that's a, a great distinction between the RD and the MVP programs. It's not like, hey, there's an MVP program and I'll graduate up to the RD. It's they're completely different things, um, yeah. but. In general, MVPs, as you point out, are very focused on specific products and feature sets within those products. Um, sure. Whereas an RD is expected to be uh, an expert in a number of different technologies and competing technologies. Sure. But most of yeah. us RDs are also business owners or senior folks within uh, you know these these companies that are actively engaged with with customers to help them along that journey and providing them advice. It's uh, it has been, I, I think, a, a great experience just in the, the connections. Yep. Again, yeah, that's true. I mean, the back, uh, and it, it, I don't want to seem a little bit old, but I mean, 15, 20 years back, I mean, we were more like a call center for any organization. Now, people we need to, to align with the business. Uh, IT and security folks need to be more aligned to the business. Business need to understand that they need to leverage us. We will enable them to achieve their own business goals. Uh, we are not just a call center, but we are a big enabler. So again, because this COVID was something disastrous, I mean, um, what happened is that companies will be leverage the technologies, leverage the IT, the IT and the technology enable them to survive and live during the situation. Right. And this is a very good example to, um, to the use of technology, of course. Yeah, you know, we used to talk about, I've been around for a while as well, and. Uh, you, you should talk about, um, you know, the, the, the need for, so I started my career almost 30 years ago as a business analyst and became a, went into project management and kind of that set a big part of the course of the first half of my career uh, in the project mm -hmm. management world. But as a, but my roots as a business analyst and technical writer uh, was that I was, you know, my task was to understand the business requirements, the business needs as well as the technology True. be the go-between of that and so i used and to them yeah right i used to write about that the fact that we needed to have more people that could bridge that gap between business and the technology True. and yeah. that has increasingly become the role of the traditional it organization with a lot of these services exactly. outside of the enterprise um that it True goes and says, hey, these are the different services, here's how the pieces come together, but has to be that, uh, you know, to do to, to that translator for the business and, and to work with people to be able to properly leverage. When, when you hear, and yeah. I know it's, it's a lot of uh, marketing spiel around business transformation, what does that actually mean to go through a business transformation? But it's exactly that. It's to yeah. understand, here's where we are as a business, here's what the technology can do and then to enable that to connect those two sides together that's a problem because sometimes i'm glad that you mentioned this there's also a misconception when you think about automation versus the transformation so people think that okay we're just putting a couple of softwares and some tools 
uh, to our existing processes that this is a kind of transformation. No, this is kind of an automation. Yes, there are some benefits, of course, but I mean, this is automation. But the complete transformation means that you're completely changing, revamping all your processes. This is the real transformation. And this, some people just get this kind of misconception between the automation and the transformation. Right. Well, I mean, look, you can, uh, we just had a question this morning where somebody was asking about using some features and tools on their Windows 7 and which is now no longer being supported. And we're saying it's like, look, you can go do that. Look, the, if you've got the space, if your hardware requirements, whatever, you know, the technology should work with seven. It's in the documentation that it supports it. Yeah. However, yeah. not the best utilization of all the technology. If you really want to see all the features light up, you need to upgrade, which you upgrade, which you can do for free still from seven to yeah. 10, move to 10 yeah. and then leverage yeah. all the benefits of that. But you're right. That's kind of a, a small example. No, I, no, I had the same. I have the same discussion. I was just telling the people. I mean, you are now in 2020, and you want to use a technology that had been invented like 12 years ago. I mean, how can how, I mean? There's not logic. I mean, uh, you're you're trying to go and advance and transform, and you're still using the old technology. I mean, it, it will not get you give you all the bells and whistles you're looking for. And and you know what'll happen too? To it's the the IT team will pay the price because they'll figure out a way to get those newer products to work with that old desktop. And then, you know, and then the people will be satisfied for about uh, five minutes and then yeah. come back. Why can't I do this? Like, well, because we need to upgrade you to the, to the latest. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's true. Uh, it's, it's interesting times. Well, well, it's really been, it's great to, uh, to get to talk to you and, and get to know you. And, uh, Hopefully one of these days we'll get back and I'll be able to see you at one of these MVP summits or maybe an event yeah. over in your part of the world. I'd love to get back over there. I had one yeah. trip over to that region that was, uh, that was canceled. I was actually going to pass through on my way to India and then oh, the okay. COVID thing happened. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, for people that want to find out. Hopefully, hopefully, you know, hopefully it'll be maybe Ignite the tours or something like this maybe in, there used to be one in Dubai. Yep. We delivered one year in Dubai before the, the COVID, before the pandemic in February. That's what I was going to bring was what one of the, ah. uh, that's what it was. I was going to be over in okay. India. And uh, yeah, so we'll hopefully, the, you know, next year, middle of next year, that stuff will pick back up again. Sure, very, sure. Very successful. But for folks that want to find out more about you, get in touch. What are the best ways to get in touch with you? So they can reach me on uh, LinkedIn, of course, um, Ahmed Nabil Mahmoud. Uh, or my blog, it's itcalls.net, and um, I'll be glad to answer any question um, on these two channels as well. Excellent. Well, thanks a lot. Have a great rest of your afternoon.